this video we're going to be talking about how to change your cat diesel engine air compressor and a few reasons why you might want to change it obviously this one is pushing some oil so the customer wanted to get this air compressor changed out So here we have the air compressor. It's got uh, two coolant hoses, has a air inlet and an air out. And the air out is the hot hose, also known as usually steel braided. We have your governor line. There's a pressure relief valve. There are three bolts holding it on. This is on a C15. And you also have an oil supply line. Now, since it has coolant going to the air compressor you're gonna to have to drain your cooling system before you remove the air compressor and we're gonna be changing the air dryer so I've removed some of the hoses already uh, your air inlet um, I've drained the coolant obviously I've removed two of the three bolts or nuts holding it on and you're just gonna to want to remove all the lines now cat uses gear driven air compressors so Basically, you don't have to worry about belt tension, anything like that. Also, they are not timed, except for if you have a C7S or a C9S. Those are gear-driven as well, but they're also timed. So if you do change your air compressor, you're going to have to pin it. But this is on a Regen C15, and they are not timed. So we have already removed the coolant hose coming from the back of the block we're going to now be removing the clamps holding the upper hose here and whenever you're removing these hoses you want to inspect them for nicks uh, wear points anything um, are they stiff do they not move um, pretty much all the hoses going to the air compressor should be flexible if you find any with nicks or damage you'll want to get them replaced now Whoever had put this last air compressor bolt on here, it was really, really tight. Now, these torque to about 75 foot-pounds, but I couldn't break it loose with my 3 8 ratchet without... I was probably going to snap the extension here. So, I do a little trick where I grab... If you grab a wrench, you can chain the wrenches together, but it'll nick the open-end portion. So, what I like to do is if I can get a wrench on the nut or the bolt... If you have a rubber mallet or a dead blow hammer, you can tap the wrench while putting force on it, and it'll usually shock, unload the tension on the bolt, and you don't have to whack it that hard, just a little tap, and it'll usually come right off. And the nice thing about using a soft face hammer is no damage to your wrench. So the bolts have now been loosened, and the air compressor is ready to come off. Now, this air compressor was pushing oil, which means your air dryer, dryer will start. You'll notice more oil coming out when it purges. That's when you hear the pss sound when it reaches about 120 PSI. If you notice that it's pushing more and more oil, usually it's the air compressor. Um, other reasons to change your air compressor. Your air compressor can lead to blow-by in the engine. It can also leave, lead to compression in your cooling system if you're getting um if your cooling pushing air bubbles almost like it has a cracked head or something but you do not have a cracked head it can actually be the air compressor now this is an sdp with a twin piston style air compressor um, these style with the twin piston tend to go out a lot um, whenever i get a customer in with an sdp i usually ask them how long they've had that particular air compressor because they tend to fail a lot. If you are having a problem with your Regen C15 losing air compressors, check the next time you get it changed. There is an update where you can install a Bendix single piston air compressor onto the engine, opposed to using the twin piston one, which seems to fail more often. Okay, so we've obviously removed the air compressor and there is the hole there where the air compressor goes. You're gonna wanna clean the ceiling area around where the bolts are where the seal fits and also now would be a good time to check your oil supply line which actually runs below and underneath the air compressor this line over time will get very firm and hard and it won't be flexible anymore and it can crack and it actually pulls full oil pressure 
off of the oil rail. And this is the line I'm talking about. If it is not flexible, like this one is pretty solid, you'll want to change that out. And it's fairly cheap, but, you know, if it failed on the road, you know, you might have to get towed somewhere to get a new line. So, change it now. So, this one just uses an O-ring to seal, so we're basically just going to wipe the area clean and then uh, scrub it down with a Brillo pad. No need to buff it heavily. Now, after your air compressors, you're going to want to drain your air tank, especially if you've had one that's been cooking oil a while. This customer noticed that his, uh, his air dryer cartridges were filling up a lot quicker with oil, so he had us change the air compressor. If he had let the air dryer saturate and then kept driving it, these tanks would have filled with oil. And, of course, you want to drain them quite often anyway, so... Already loosened this air dryer cartridge. Now, if you ever remove this, make sure you dump the air out of your system before you move it, or else that sucker is going to fly off there under air pressure. And what do you know? Tons of oil in there. So we're going to change this cartridge as well. It's a good idea if you're doing your air compressor to change the cartridge. So here we have our old air compressor, and you can see these little orange lines. I like to line those up before I pull the fittings, so when I go to put the fittings on the new air compressor, I can line them up uh, pretty close. Because it's going to save you time if you can line them up while you have the air compressor on the bench, opposed to trying to do it on the truck. Now let's talk about fittings. So there's three basic sealing type of fittings. There's pipe thread, like this little one, which you'll want to use a sealant on. Then there's the compression style, like this one. Uh, JIC is the most common. You do not use a seal on a compression style. And then there is O-ring boss. So this one doesn't use a seal or compression. It uses an O-ring. And these are very common on cat engines. Uh, most of the fittings on this are going to use the O-ring style. So when you're doing your air compressor, you're going to want to get new O-rings. And then they have these swivel style ones where you can actually move the fitting with the O-ring. And I'm going to kind of talk about how to put these on correctly if you're unfamiliar with them. So here's one. This is the coolant line. And it's going to have an O-ring, and you're going to want to change it if you have the fittings off. I don't like to reuse O-rings. I mean, some people do, but I always try to replace them. Uh, can't hurt to replace them. So you're just going to slide the O-ring over the threads to the ceiling. There's a little valley or groove in there where the o ring's supposed to sit. And then the lock nut will move the plate down to seal it against the housing. So here's that same fitting going into the top of the air compressor with the O-ring. And what you're going to do is you're going to screw in the fitting to about where you want it. But you want it to be pretty close to bottomed out. So that's bottomed out, but you don't want to go that far. So you're going to turn it about a half or full way back. And we want it to be right there. So we're going to hold it there. And what you're going to do is you're going to tighten the lock nut, but you can keep the actual fitting in where it's supposed to stay. So this is a two-wrench setup here. You'll want to hold the top portion with your wrench, keep it in place, and then you're going to tighten the lock nut, and that's what's going to seal the fitting. That O-ring and the lock nut pushing that plate underneath it and squishing the O-ring between the housing and that plate. And that's how these style fittings work. So, don't forget your seal. This uses a O-ring style seal that actually inserts into the front of the air compressor and holds it in place. And you want to make sure that your sealing surface on the front of the structure is wiped clean and no debris is on it. And then it's ready for the new air compressor to go on. So you're just going to set the new air compressor in. And this one luckily has studs, so you can slide the air compressor over the studs and then just make sure your o-ring hasn't fallen out and then you're just going to press it on nothing special about that then you're going to install your bolts and these are these studs are half inch um half inch thread so if you were to torque these they were torqued about 75 foot pounds and there are the three nuts there's one on the bottom and the two on top doesn't really matter which order you do them in. Then, as you can see, I've replaced the coolant line there. 
and you're gonna install all the lines you took on previously. So you have the two coolant lines, you have your oil supply line, you have your air outlet hot hose line. Uh, make sure you've swapped over the governor fitting and make sure you've swapped over the pressure relief valve. Now there's no oil return line because the oil returns through the front structure through the air compressor. And then you're gonna want to start up the engine and make sure that your primary air is building and as long as it gets up to the 120 psi and then purges you are pretty much good to go obviously you want to check for leaks and you want to fill up the cooling system before you start the engine again um, as you can see the uh, air pressure is building here and this is how you successfully install an air compressor in the cat engine